In this video lecture, we'll take a look at hybrid looping, which is just the use of multiple instances or mixed types of looping in programs. Okay, let's get started. Previously, at the end of the lecture materials on selection, we said that the various selection structures could be nested and or combined in any desired way to achieve some desired logical structure. Well, the same thing can be said about looping. We can nest any type of loop within any other type of loop to as many levels as needed. For example, we can nest while loops within other while loops, or we can nest for loops within other for loops, which is frequently seen with any type of matrix applications. We can also design any type of hybrid looping we wish. For example, for loops inside of while loops, or vice versa. Furthermore, we aren't limited to keeping looping and selection separate from each other. In fact, we can nest any one of these selection structures within for or while loops, or the converse. When all is said and done, we can combine any type of selection together with any type of looping to create any type of code framework imaginable to express our application's specific logic needs. Let's see a few examples of this. For starters, here's an enhancement of our original grocery checker example using nested while loops. As a refresher, here on the right in blue is the pseudocode we examined to express the looping logic to scan one customer's grocery items. These are the steps we take for any one individual customer's grocery items. Now, let's enhance this to deal with any unknown number of customers in line by wrapping an outer while loop around our original inner while loop. These added steps shown in red are performed for each additional customer in line. So now we have two nested while loops, an outer loop for each customer in line, and an inner loop for each customer's items. But each of these individual loops has all the standard while loop elements. Now for the outer loop, the priming read is to check for a first customer in line. The loop condition is to check whether there still are any customers in line. The loop body is simply to perform all these inner loop actions for that customer's items. And the update read becomes checking for another customer in line. Two nested while loops, but if you look for the general pattern among all the specific details, we see that each while loop has an identical basic structure. Here's a simple example of using some nested for loops. Suppose we wanted to generate this lower triangular numerical output pattern somehow. How would we do it? Well, if we steer at this for a few moments, perhaps the general pattern will reveal itself to us. We have five rows here, but each row has a different number of elements. And that number of elements is the number of the row itself. Furthermore, those elements themselves are simply the ordered numbers from one to the number of the row. So this is starting to have the appearance of two nested for loops. The outer one loops from one to five, and each inner one loops from one to whatever the current outer loop value is. This is an example of nested for loops, where the inner for loop is coupled with the outer for loop. The outer looping index is being used within the inner loop. Such coupling is not at all uncommon and is often seen in 2D matrices which, alas, we probably won't get to in this course. Here's a nice code example of nested for loops applied to a specific familiar situation. This is actually an old homework problem I gave one semester in my class. Think of the old traditional Christmas song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, and all those gifts being given. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing the whole song for you. But as you may or may not recall, there was one gift given on the first day, then two gifts plus the original gift re-given on the second day, and so on and so on for 12 days. The overall progression of gifts given in the song is shown in this output on the bottom. The rows are the 12 days, and the columns are the gifts given each day. How can we generate this diagram and come up with the total sum of gifts given? Well, once again, this has the outward appearance of involving two nested for loops. As we can see in the code on the right, the outer for loop loops over the days from 1 to 12. And notice that we're calling the loop index variable day and not the usual generic i or j for better readability in this situation. Then in the inner for loop, for each day, we're looping down, starting from the day number of the outer loop, down by one each time as our decrement, down to one as our loop condition. So in this case, the inner loop is coupled to the outer loop by the day as the starting index. For each iteration of this inner loop, we simply print the gift number in a blank space on the same line and add that gift count to this running total which we initialize to zero up here before beginning the looping. After we complete each pass through the inner for loop, we kick the output down to the next line here, 
before beginning the next iteration of this outer loop. As far as variable block scope goes, just note that this inner gift index variable is only visible within this inner for loop, but the day index variable of this outer loop is visible to the contained inner loop and may be used here to initialize this inner loop. This is what makes the two loops coupled. The sum variable, by contrast, has method scope and is visible throughout the entire main method, including within this inner for loop. When all is said and done, here are all the gift-giving details. On the fifth day of Christmas, for example, the song sings about five gifts, then four, then three, then two, and finally, on each day, about that one partridge in a pear tree. Total number of gifts given? A whopping 364. It's quite instructive to watch this code execute in the debugger and watch the nested looping unfold step by step. Please take a moment now to pause this video and view the short code walkthrough for looping for nested.java, which you'll find in the usual place. Open up this file in JGraphs so you can follow along, then come back to this video when you are finished. Here's the general outline of a final code example which demonstrates hybrid looping and selection, something I ginned up to show as a bit more interesting combination of things. Let's imagine that what we'd like to do is print all the days of the year, separated by month, along with their corresponding day of the year ordering. We also like to visually flag a handful of key dates, for example, such as my son's birthday or the last day of this semester. A representative output sample is shown here on the right. This figure on the right shows the general logical structure we might use. We can think of this in terms of two nested for loops. In this outer loop, we're looping from 1 to 12 over the months of the year, and that lets us put a little white space between each month as we see here between November and December. Then in this inner for loop, we're simply looping over the days of each month and printing out the date number and the date, which as you might imagine, both derive from the CS12 date class. However, the days per month differs for each month, so we need some way of determining what that is for each month, so that we have the max value for each coupled nested inner loop. And so that's where this switch statement comes in. It simply performs an int switch on one of the 12 possible month numbers and returns the corresponding number of days in that month, which can only be 30, 31, or in the case of February, 28 or 29, depending upon whether it's a leap year. Also, as we're traversing these inner for loops for the days of the month, we also might have some if-else-if selection logic so that we can annotate some small handful of special dates like these. This example is a bit too lengthy for one slide, but it's a nice example to go through because it ties a lot of things together into one application. Please finish up by viewing the code walkthrough for looping for day numbers 2java which you'll find in the usual place. Open up this file in JGraphs so you can follow along and get a feel for how you might combine selection and looping into one program. Here's one more example I added to show how you might go about achieving selective conditional printing within a for loop. In this example, we want to print the numbers from 1 to n in a for loop, but then append a message only to those values which are multiples of some specified factor. In addition, we want to separately flag only the first such multiple with its own message, but not for any other times. In this output on the right side, we can see we're printing the numbers from 1 to 20 in a loop, but adding some added text only to those values, which are multiples of three. But for the first such value, we want to print this special message, but not for any other values, one time only. How do we do this? I'll defer the details to the code walkthrough, but the idea here is that we do not print the numbers with new lines using println. Instead, we use print or printf instead, and splice in the selection logic prints. Only after we've done this do we add an explicit new line at the end using this println. To ensure that the special message gets printed only one time, we define a Boolean variable as shown up here and we check its value for a first occurrence. This second condition will only be true on the very first time when the variable itself is false. Once we encounter the first occurrence in this first if clause, we print our one-time special message, toggle the value of the boolean, and then it acts as a software latch and prevents this message from ever getting printed again. Every other time this other case is encountered for other multiples, this boolean latch variable remains true, so this other message is printed for every other multiple. 
To see this code execute in more detail, please view the code walkthrough for looping for and printing.java, which you'll find in the usual place. Open up this file in JGrasp so you can follow along to see exactly how this works. Okay, but for now, that wraps up this discussion of hybrid looping.